is strange for me to be speaking to you through this medium. It is new to me, and I suspect I will be somewhat awkward at first and make a lot of mistakes. So please be patient with me <clears throat> while I learn this. It is a time of discomfort in so many ways. This is part of that journey. We've decided to use this venue to try to keep us all in touch during this time when we're going to feel more disconnected than we have before. We have spent so much time at Most Precious Blood talking about community and connection, and I'm hoping that those messages will help us to stay connected even though we are going to be physically apart, at least for the immediate future. I'm choosing to do three separate videos per week during this time of Lent, at least because the readings that we get on Sunday Mass are so rich during this time that I thought I could break them into three sections and talk a little bit about each reading. And so I'm going to talk today simply about the first reading, which I'm assuming you all have access to through the PDF file. It does come from Exodus 17, and there's a sort of famous moment when the people grumble against Moses. And I know that many of us wonder what was going on. Moses had just freed them from captivity. He'd led them on a new adventure, and they're constantly not trusting him. Now, I've been in that desert, in that area of the world, a few times on pilgrimage. And from the very first time I was there, I have never read this passage the same way uh, again because we don't always have a sense of the intensity of that experience. The heat, the dryness, sometimes the wind. Water isn't something you think about every once in a while. It's a constant need. And in the Hebrew scriptures, the imagery of a wellspring is absolutely a, a sort of metaphor for God continuing to create new life. Water is always the sign of life. So God is creating new life in the midst of difficult journey. Journey that we know reminds us of the frailty of life. And so in their constant thirst, they start grumbling against Moses. And this episode in the 17th chapter is not the first episode. This happens at two different places, uh, Mera and uh, Elam, earlier uh, at the end of, or yeah, towards the end of chapter 15 in Exodus. And then chapter 16 is spent quite a bit on the manna in the desert, where they're now complaining they don't have food. And it's fascinating because it sounds like they complain a lot. But we're not talking about a critique of their show at the theater. They're grumbling because they don't have food and water. These are the basics of life. They are scared. They are worried. They do not know what the journey ahead holds. And so they're looking at Moses thinking he brought them into this. And even though he brought them out of slavery, they're not sure he's brought them into something better. I have been fond over the years of saying that too many of us will always choose familiar misery over unknown possibility. Uh, Right now, that's not really our choice. We're not choosing. We are being led into unknown territory. We are going to find ways to deal with it, but we're not quite sure what those will be yet. I've had two experiences since this began. One is, is something someone sent me online. The other, though, is something that happened in person. Uh, I was at the grocery store and I had gone early in the morning, which I always do. I usually shop very early in the morning, and I'm usually alone. So in a time of social distancing, I had more company shopping than I've ever had in my life. And of course, as I'm going down the aisle where all the uh, hygienic supplies are, they're out of hand sanitizer. Now, I didn't need hand sanitizer. I was just moving past at the time. And there was a woman about my age just railing against an employee because they didn't have hand sanitizer. And she was loudly 
kind of calling out to any of us passing by that she was sure the employees were uh, stealing it and keeping it for their families. And I just thought, why do we create villains where there are none? It's clear there's a shortage, and yet someone is feeling threatened. And too often when we're threatened, we start behaving badly with one another. It, it just happens. All of us have done it. All of us have been the person in the grocery store uh, screaming at someone over a situation that is no one's fault. So I kind of watched this unfold and when I got home, I was looking uh, through some posts that people had sent me, and I saw that amazing story many of you have heard out of Assisi in Italy, a time when people are truly in quarantine in their apartments. And it was talking about how they were opening up the windows and singing out into the street, and even singing together and singing across to one another. and keeping their windows open and their voices raised so that people who were truly alone would hear them, would know that they're not alone, would know that we are still part of a community. And I just think that that is such an amazing story. And I think all of us are somewhere between the woman screaming in the grocery store and the people singing to one another. We have to decide not what's going to happen, that's out of our hands, but who we're going to be in this. This is the constant message of Scripture. It's a call for who we're going to be. It's not a theological, magical way to protect ourselves from life and the world, but learning to be who we believe we are called to be, who God has called us uh, to manifest in the world. We are made in the image of God, but we have to bring that image into likeness, into something visible that can be seen. And so, you know, as we, as we go forward in the week ahead, we are going to be afraid. We have been, for the last several years, culturally almost nurtured into being on edge with one another. I personally uh, think this happened around the advent of reality TV. We became entertained by people being voted off an island, fired at work. We became entertained uh, in, in contests that were really good contests, but many people tuned in to see their favorite mean judge who would tell them they're awful, uh, or their favorite host who would tell them they're the weakest link. We have begun to watch reality shows that just focus on famous families who behave badly with one another. And we love to see when they, you know, kind of rip each other apart. And I can't help but wonder how far we are from the people who would gather at a Colosseum to watch the Lions and the Christians. We are supposed to be the Christians. We are supposed to be light in the world. Not a light that eradicates the darkness, but a light that knows how to be beautiful even in the darkness. We may never get past all the darkness this side of the grave, but we can be a people who choose to sing to one another from the windows we have opened rather than to scream at one another in the grocery store. We can be those who stay in touch in the most difficult of circumstance. We can be those who believe in the glory of the Spirit, not within the human heart, but between human hearts. And that cannot be distanced. We can stay connected even while physically feeling distant and even hungering for one another's presence. Pick up a phone, pick up a camera, uh, open the windows. Do not look for people to blame. I think this is a time when we look for the people to whom we can sing praise as people of hope and as people who trust that we will once again be led to the water.